commercial livestock farming is more competitive than ever. You need the best nutrition for optimal performance to maximise the bottom line. Ensuring consistency in feed rations requires a combination of quality ingredients, rigorous mixing techniques and correct quality assurance protocols. BEC Feed Solutions offers a wide range of vitamin mineral premixes and feed additives to support commercial producers across the beef, dairy, poultry and pig industries. This video summarises BEC's recommendations on practical ways to make sure you achieve quality and consistency in each feed ration. They include labelling, precision weighing, correct sequencing, filling to the right levels, ideal mixing times, washing, flushing or rinsing and sampling and analysis. A feed ration typically contains several different groups of ingredients. They include micro-ingredients like vitamin mineral premixes, salt, organic acids, flavours, probiotics and many more. Macro-ingredients such as grains, protein meals, calcium and phosphorus sources and liquid applications like fats, amino acids and molasses. And in ruminant feeds, a feed ration can also include silage, hay and other by-products such as mill run. Rigorous mixing techniques are necessary to ensure that each animal receives the required amount of nutrients. Make sure all additives are correctly identified before mixing starts. Precision weighing equipment measures ingredient doses as they are added to the mixing vessel. Correct sequencing of ingredient addition is very important. 30 to 50% of grain needs to be loaded into the mixer before addition of micro-ingredients. It is highly beneficial to add and mix all of the micro-ingredients together once they have been weighed. The mixed blend of micro-ingredients is now ready to be added to other macro-ingredients. After this, the liquid applications should be added. Finally, the remaining macro-ingredients should be added to complete the batch volume as required in the feed formulation. This will result in a homogeneous mix of mash livestock feed which can either be processed further or sent to the farm. As a rule of thumb, there must be at least 2 kilograms of micro-ingredients for each tonne of feed. Any less, and there won't be enough to ensure thorough dispersion throughout the mixed batch. Other things to remember, batch mixes should not be overloaded or underloaded. When filling mixers, capacity is determined by volume, not by weight. No amount of mixing will produce uniform feed in a mixer which is over full or not full enough. On the farm, similar mixing principles apply. All ingredients must be weighed out individually. 30 to 50% of macro ingredients must be added first. All micro-ingredients must be added together before mixing with other macro-ingredients. Liquid applications follow. Finally, the remainder of macro-ingredients are added to complete the formulated ration. It is also beneficial to mix the micronutrients with a small proportion of grain using a bucket or a cement mixer before adding to the rest of the batch and don't exceed the maximum fill point. Thorough mixing is critical. Inadequately mixed feed will not have an even distribution of nutrient levels. For commercial horizontal ribbon mixes or paddle mixes, allow around two to three minutes. Ideal mixing times for other equipment may vary. Washing, flushing or rinsing is recommended after changeover in rations or at the end of each day. Washing, flushing or rinsing of batch mixes is a quality assurance procedure which can prevent unwanted ingredients from previous batches being used. This can be done with grain, mill mix or limestone in feed mills. On farms, it can be done with water. Routine sampling is another important quality assurance protocol. Samples should be recorded, retained and analysed for nutrient levels. Mixing performance can be measured by the coefficient of variation, which is a measurement of variation between samples taken from a given batch. 
Levels of the unique ingredient, such as an amino acid or medication, are measured and the coefficient of variation formula is applied. Where the coefficient of variation is less than 10%, the mix is rated excellent and no corrective action is required. A 10 to 15% result is regarded as good, but indicates that a review of procedures could be beneficial. A 15 to 20% coefficient of variation is still fair. However, a corrective action could include looking for evidence of worn equipment, overfilling or errors in the sequence. If the coefficient of variation exceeds 20%, the mix is rated poor. Corrective action may involve increasing mixing time, replacing worn components and modifying mixing practices. Modern nutritional science gives today's commercial farmers their best chance of maximising livestock quality and the bottom line. Applying the correct mixing techniques, quality assurance measures and use of quality ingredients can give your animals and your bottom line the best chance of success.